Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is episode number 58, Sort with a Formula. All right, so here's the question. Mike sent this over. Uh, Om Paula from YouTube asked, how can we have a formula that will sort but keep the original data order intact? I can already tell that Mike's going to win this one. Uh, and the thing that, that got me is I saw that there were ties here. Ties make this very, very difficult. Uh, first of all, we're going to start off with the one that doesn't have ties. My solution to this is I come along and I insert a new column. That column is going to use the rank function. I want the rank of this value uh, within this range of values. I'll press F4 there. You'll see that, that says that is rank number 4 and we'll copy that down. So we get all the numbers from 1 through 5. And then what I do is I come over here and put in the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you see that I already used a cool little trick there of changing the font color from black to white so that we no one even sees that those numbers are there. And then equal V lookup, V lookup. I'm always going to go back to column D, so I'll press F4 one, two, three times there. My range that I'm going to look up from is this range, F4, comma, two, comma, false. And we see that Sue has the largest sales. Copy that down. All right, now I'm going to copy that over. And here I'm going to edit it to say that I want column three instead of column two. Copy that down. All right, and so we see the largest sale and the next and next and next. Now let's do a little test here. Let's say that Lee comes along, gets a big sale, uh, and he now has 33 for the day. Bam, it re it sorts automatically using that formula. But it starts to fail when we have a tie, all right? So you have two people at 21. Whoops, two people at 21. We're getting NAs. And the reason we're getting NAs is the way that Excel does the rank formula. Now I've complained about this in the past, we get 1, 2, 3, 3, 5. In Excel 2010, they changed the way that you can do rank, uh, but what they do is they give me 1, 2, 3 and a half, 3 and a half, 5. Not at all what I wanted. Uh, so if you have the possibility of ties, you know, hopefully you have some big huge number and no one's ever in a tie, but if you have the possibility of ties, then you have to say, all right, we're going to use the rank plus the count if how many numbers above me? So we're going to go from uh, C dollar sign four to C four is equal to C five, and what that will do? Oh, man, should be a plus sign there. there we go. What we get? Really silly format there we get the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So even if there's a tie, the first person shows up with a 3, the next person shows up with a 4, and that allows that to work. Uh, definitely not a fun solution. There has to be something better. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Not a fun solution. I love the solution. It's going to use the rank, the count if, and the VLOOKUP. Everyone knows those functions and you don't have to do an array formula. All right, um, I'm going to do an array formula and trying to, uh, to, do, to do two different formulas here. All right, the first thing is I'm going to try and sort with the formula the numbers and then do some sort of lookup on the sorted numbers that can deal with duplicates. So I'm going to use the large function. The large function, just we can tell it give me the second largest, third largest, and it will give us just those values. So I'm going to highlight that and then hit the F4 key to lock it, comma. And as I copy it down, I need a number incrementer. So I need one, two, three as it goes down through the row. So I'll just use the rows with an S rows function. D4, so I'm going to say, hey, D dollar sign four. That means that cell reference is locked. D4, that one is not. That means an expandable range. So as we go down, it'll go from four to four, which is one row, four to five, which is two. That is our number incrementer. Copy it down. I'm going to do the control, the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift F4. That gives me a currency format. All right, now I'm going to try the index, index function. Index is a lookup function. I give it the array. Well, the things I want to return are the names. Oh, I can already see I did this backwards. I'm going to highlight this hold shift and point to the edge. And when I see that move cursor, I'm going to drag. And when I see that gray bar, I'm going to drop it. I'm going to let go of the mouse, but not the shift. All right, now I have the sales in the right column. 
All right, um, actually, maybe I should just go like this. You can see it's hard to drop that. Wow, that's really hard. This, oh, there it is, right there, there it is, right. Well, I guess it's uh, better to just go, <laughs> let's do it this way. Almost, there we go. Whew. That took a long time. Uh, equals index. The lookup range, I want to look up these names. F4, comma, and what if I use the match, the match function? I say, hey, match function, look up that, comma, within this range right here, F4, comma, 0. That'll return uh, the ordinal position. The problem is, when I copy this down, it gives me Lee because match, when you put a 0, these are not um, sorted numbers. So when you put a 0, it says find exact match. It's always going to find the first one. So now I need to do something slightly different here. I'm going to get rid of that match. I'm going to have to use the small function. And ultimately, what the index function needs right here is a row number. So for these duplicates, I need row 3, because 1, 2, 3, and row 5. 3, 4, so 3 and 5. Here I need 3, here I need 5. So I'm going to use the small function. The small function, I'm going to create an array of the row numbers. And since I have duplicates, I can, as I copy down, say, hey, small, get the first smallest row number, second smallest. But I need to uh, just pick out the rows with 20. So I'm going to say if, if what? If anything in this range right here, F4, is equal to this. That's going to give me a bunch of trues and falses. F9 to evaluate. True, true. There's a true, true. Control Z. If that's true, then what do I want? I want the row. The problem with row right here, F4, is that that'll give me row 4, 5. So I'm going to, that won't work, so I'm going to subtract from it the row. Now notice what this will do is this will give me 4 minus 4, which is 0. So that won't work, and I want 1 here, so I'll add 1 back in. All right, that's the end of the if. And if you highlight the if and hit the F9, you can see it gives me false, false, false. Oh, there's our 3 and 5. So that's the array that the small is looking at, right? So all I need is a K here. Give me the first one and then the second one. Control Z, comma, the K, comma. And I'm going to use the Mr. Excel trick he just did, the count ifs. That is just beautiful. Count ifs. What am I going to count? I'm going to count this, shift colon, comma, this. Close parentheses. Now I need to lock this. This needs to be an expandable range. Right now it'll give me a count of 1, because there's one of them. If I hit the F4 key, when I copy it down, then that criteria will move to here, and it'll be the second one. All right, and then that's the K, close off, close off on the index, and that's it. Now I have to, this is an array formula. And the reason why it's an array formula is this if function logical test, we gave it more than one true and false. So boom, you, you have to use Control Shift Enter. I'm holding Control Shift and Enter. All right, and then Lee, Sue, Mary. Lee, Sue, Mary. All right, so that looks like it worked. If you're in 2010, this small can re be replaced with the aggregate function, and you don't have to do Control Shift Enter. So if you download this workbook, you can uh, see how to do that aggregate. All right, uh, I'll throw it back over to Mr. Excel. Uh, I'm sure that formula was just amazing, but I'm still stuck back here with hold down the shift key, drag right, let go, but don't let go of the shift key. What, what, Mike, what were you trying to do? I understand the headings were wrong. How about just something like cut and then alt I E to insert cell? Yours is cooler though. All right, hey, uh, that's the beautiful thing about these Dueling Excel podcasts is you pick up so much stuff. Um, I realize now that Mike is running circles around me. I need to start studying more. All right. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel.